Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. Uh, first video ever. <laughs> I'm going to do a Kerbal Space Program build. So I was watching uh, The First Man. Uh, it must have been, I don't know, a few days ago. And uh, really good film. Well, quite a good film. It's not, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. I definitely recommend it. Um, and it's about Neil Armstrong. And it starts off, like the very first thing is him flying in this, which is the X-15. So this is a NASA and US Air Force kind of joint experimental project. Um, and it went into space. So it didn't go into orbit, but it is a space plane, effectively. Now it is a rocket, um, or it has a rocket motor. Uh, not sure what kind of rocket motor, but very early on anyway. I mean, look at this cockpit. Must have been scary to fly one of these. It certainly felt kind of scary in the film. Um, completely analog, you know, no help, no fly-by-wire. And it was launched off a of B-52. So B-52 would go up to high altitude. The X-15 is sitting on the wing. I think there's a better photo down here. There you go, like this, tucked in the wing here. And uh, when it got up to, I know, however many thousand feet, 30, 40,000 feet, I'm not sure what the ceiling is for an X-52. It would drop the X-15 and the X-15 would then turn on its rockets or its rocket and fly off into space. Um, so it didn't have much fuel because it didn't need that much, uh, but it would fly off into space. They would try, you know, RCS thrusters and collect data uh, about being in space and then uh, it would come back into landing, just glide down and land in the desert. Now in the film it actually had skids on the rear, it didn't even have landing gear. Um, which is, oh, and there you go, there it is with skids. Which is scary, <laughs> um, but hey, that's what they went for. So I thought, let's build one of these and a B-52 and Kerbal Space Program. Um, but I'll start with just the X-15 to start with, and then we'll build the B-52, and then we'll join them together at some point and uh, try and do the full mission as seen in the film, because it looked like good fun. Uh, so, let's jump into KSP and uh, see if we can build one of these. Watching it end again and again I feel it in ways you follow me I'm drifting to places I should leave
Well, there we go, chaps. Um, not the best build, but not the worst. I mean, it's uh, it looks enough like an X52. I mean, it's a shame I can't paint it all black. That's the one thing KSB hasn't really nailed yet, is being able to paint everything. You can paint some things, but nothing that I've used, I don't think. Um, so yeah, like it's not totally accurate, and I feel like the wings are a bit too big, but you know, I struggled a lot with the wings, and that was the best I could do. Uh, I've got some ailerons inside the wings as well, which I'm not massively happy with. But, you know, overall, it'll do. It'll do. And uh, I think all we have to do now is uh, take it out for a test flight. And see how it goes. Um, so, I'll see you on the runway. Okay, so here we are on the runway. Rolling. Let's put the brakes on. Uh, there we go. Alright, got to toggle those. Right, okay. So yes, here we are on the runway, uh, ready to launch. Now, this plane, rocket plane, rocket plane, was never supposed to take off, as far as I know, on its own. So I'm not really expecting this to work, <laughs> but we'll see. Um, if it does work, then we'll try and turn around. Well, we'll go high. We'll try and turn around and then uh, come back to come back to base. So wish me luck. We're going to use SAS. And probably RCS for this to try and keep it stable because the landing gear is um well let's just say this sort of landing gear tends to wobble a lot in KSP so let's just see how we go so uh engines on and let's throttle up off we go I will be using a joystick for this flight because I feel like this is going to be a twitchy beast we'll see I don't think the nose is pointing up, so I'm not sure we're actually going to be able to get any lift here. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh. Okay. Well, we're not on the runway anymore. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Things are exploding. Rip. Okay, let's try that one more time. Try that one more time. SAS on, RCS on, and roll up. Oh, do I still have the brakes on? Oh, I'm an idiot. I thought we still had the brakes on. I didn't even check. I certainly feel like we're going a little bit faster now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Surely we can fly now. Surely. But it will fly, just about, I think. Let's try that one more time. I know I said one more time before, but just one more, one more time. I think it can't take off on its own, but when it gets to the end of the runway, it should fall off, and then we should be able to fly it. So I just need to keep it straight. That's the objective. Uh, right, throttle up. Let's go. I'm not going to touch anything. I'm just going to hope that it stays straight. Doing badly, we're all just a little bit off the center line, but we're not bad. We're still going to get to the end of the runway first, so that's okay. We're going pretty quick now. I would definitely expect to be able to fly. Wait, there we go. Gear up, yes. And let's go properly. Space shuttle status. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It rolls a lot. Let's turn our CS off. Yeah, that's. 
that's better. Oh, something else we should turn. Actually, we should turn off SAS. They never had that in the real plane. It was all, uh, it was all analog. I'm just gonna go totally vertical. We don't really want to gain too much speed, otherwise we'll fly miles away when we go into space, which is exactly what almost happened to Neil Armstrong. Uh, I'm also going to turn off these reaction wheels because they shouldn't be a thing either. There we go. Let's see how we're doing for fuel. We can burn for quite a long time. This thing can maybe even make it to space on its own. Although right now we're not even using the wings really. It's 100% uh, it's rocket shooting us up in the sky. I think Neil Armstrong got to about 150,000 feet, which is ooh, about 50,000 meters, I suppose. I don't know if anybody else flew higher in the X-15. Probably. He stopped flying the X-15 because he went on to uh, the Gemini program, which was the... Uh, the orbital test program and then uh, obviously joined Apollo for the moon landings. So I don't really know much more about the X-15 other than what I saw in the film First Man. And basically he went, uh, went a little bit too high or too fast, I'm not sure. And then, because now that we've left the atmosphere basically, um, well, we can't control our roll or anything because there's no air. <laughs> and this is exactly what happened to Armstrong. Um, and when he regained control of the aircraft using his RCS thrusters, which we're going to have to do now because that's no good, is it? Um, he almost... Well, they said... In the film, they said bounce off the atmosphere. What they really meant was he started flying too soon and he wasn't going to be on his trajectory back down to where he's going to land, so he's flying too far. Now, I don't know how we're going to turn around. I suppose... I suppose we can just turn around uh, when we get back into the air. So we just have to wait for our parabola to bring us back down. We're still climbing very, very fast. We're... I mean, we're very, very high. That's... Uh, probably much higher than it was supposed to go, ever. This is obviously Neil Armstrong's view in the film, except he had two tiny windows instead of this big window. Let's try and sort ourselves out here without using SAS. Okay, man. Here we go. Question is, where are we actually going to fall back to Kerbin? Let's take a look at the map. Oh, we're flying very, very far. Oh, we are not going to make it back to base. Oh, I thought I was flying almost directly up as well, but not at all. Not at all. Okay, so I think the plan. Uh, so that's so we'll start falling in forty seconds. We might just have to land on that island. I think we could try turning around, but I don't think there's going to be enough air to start pushing us back that way. But if I go into a straight dive, let's let's see what we can do. Okay, we're pretty much hitting the atmosphere now. I can tell because the ship's trying to turn itself around because it is effectively a dart. Yeah, there it goes. Right, let's turn on. Whoa, here we go, re-entering. Wow. Uh, hope we don't die. We certainly might die. Fallen quite a long way, quite fast. Oh, that's a lot of buffeting and whatnot. A lot of turbulence. Let's see if we can turn us around. Come on, come on, come on. Oh wow, it maneuvers incredibly well at high speeds, actually. I think it being shaped like a dart definitely helps. Can we see where we're trying to go? Oh, there's absolutely no chance of making it back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's not happening. Right, let's look for a suitable landing zone. I'm not going to make it there. We will make it over here. It doesn't, looks pretty bumpy. Might be a little bit flatter over there, perhaps. 
Okay, let's head that way. Okay, okay. I'll complete a turn and I'll land on the flat bit near the near the sea. I think we've got a radar altimeter in here as well. Yep. So we're at about a thousand meters. One thing I didn't put on here, which I think was on the real thing, are air brakes. I'm guessing there were air brakes on the real thing. Because it probably fell quite fast. But yeah, you can really throw this thing around. It's not falling out of the sky. I am happy with this. Gear down. Uh, looking for a suitable spot, really. I guess we'll just land on the hill here. Oh, that's quite low. Flare. There we go. And boom. Nice. Put the brakes on. That's how it's done. Beautiful. Right, well, I'm pretty happy with the uh, X-15. I think uh, I need to work out how I'm going to attach it to a B-52. I also need to actually build a B-52 that's large enough to carry this thing, because this isn't particularly small. Um, so yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.